Chapter 13, Progress and Performance Measurements and Evaluation. So where are we here in this course? Well, if you're at Chapter 13, you're about right here. We're monitoring progress. Now, we've had some dual activities here, some parallel activities, if you will, um, really on three main veins here um, for the last few weeks, and we are coming down the stretch, and this is light at the end of the tunnel. So let's talk about monitoring uh, projects. So the structure of a project monitoring information system, this is a system you need to build over time, involves determining what data to collect, qualitative, quantitative, determining how, when, and who will collect the data, who's in charge of monitoring and bringing this stuff in, how do we analyze our data, and how do we report our current project progress. Now, let's talk first about what data to collect. So data needs to answer the following types of questions. What is the current status of the project in terms of schedule and cost? We've talked about a lot of different ways to track your schedule, to you know, take a big project and narrow its scope and break it down into, fall, in, into smaller parts and then tie days into that and then make a timeline. Um, how much will it cost to complete the project? You take those little pieces, you put costs in there, and you can start to build your, your initial budget and your cash flow statement. When will the project be completed? This is something that we started pretty early in an academic setting. It's, it's really easy to draw parallels. You have something due on a certain date. Uh, then you take that date and start planning backwards to current time, to, to today, and build your timeline. Uh, we've illustrated this in any number of ways, um, from the work breakdown structure, um, the allowable days, the, the margin you build into those, and then ultimately something like a Gantt chart. Now, also ask yourself when you're collect thinking about collecting data, are there potential problems that need to be addressed now? We went through a little bit of this in our risk assessment. Then we need to look at what, who, and where are the causes for the cost or schedule overruns, and how do we address them? If there is a cost overrun midway in the project, can we forecast the overrun at the completion? Like, is this something that's going to continually escalate? Is it a one-time cost in terms of time and or money? Or is this something that's going to be ongoing? This is something we need to monitor as project managers um, because, quite frankly, our supervisors are going to monitor it for us if we do not. We, uh, they're going to call on a project manager and say, hey, why are you over budget? Or, hey, why are you two weeks behind schedule? You need to have the pertinent information at your fingertips to be able to answer that question. So let's talk about collecting data and doing an analysis. Will the data be collected by the project team, contractor, so we talked about last week outsourcing, independent cost engineers, or the project manager? A lot of it's going to fall in the lap of the project manager. And we're treating this class, each of you, like, you know, pretend you're, you're a project manager. Will the data be derived electronically uh, from some sort of surrogate data? Is there some sort of tracking software you're using? Are we just checking days off the calendar? What is it? Um, should the reporting period be one hour, one day, one week, or what? We've talked a little bit about that, about projects in here. Um, you know, putting specific dates on things can be problematic, especially when you get off schedule. Um, breaking things down by week, uh, breaking things down by month, the project is bigger. Uh, it gives you certain milestones to hit and for you to be able to track. Is there a central repository of data collected and is someone responsible for its dissemination? So these are a lot of like... Um, responsibilities within a team, who's making sure we stay on task, etc. Now, when it comes to reports and reporting, who gets the progress reports? Is there a supervisor? Is Are you a third-party vendor providing it for a company? Who receives that information? How will these reports be transmitted? When will the reports be distributed? Is this a regular reporting thing? Or are you waiting for stuff to come up and be asked about it? Or do you want to keep people abreast to what's going on on an ongoing basis? A common topic format for progress reports. Progress reports since the last report. So how's it going since your last milestone? Current status of the project. What's your schedule? What's your cost? What's your scope? Cumulative trends. What's going on in this project, positive or negative, and how's that affecting the potential outcome? Problems and issues since the last report. These are actions and resolutions of earlier problems. And then new variances. Um, and new variances of, uh, you know, 
what's a trend basically? Is there something unforeseen that's just come up? A problem that needs to, that needs to be properly diagnosed, or is there a new problem identified? And then, if so, what is your corrective action plan? Now, the project control process. So this is control is the process of comparing actual performance against the plan, your milestones, to to identify deviations and evaluate possible alternative course of actions and take the appropriate corrective action. Um, it kind of boils down to responsibility, like. Are you being responsible with your own timeline or are you just kind of flippantly coming off of it? You want to make sure you, you make a plan and you stick to it. You can adjust that plan if something, a problem arises and you need to adjust it. But you need to make sure um, you're zeroing in on your project objective in a timely manner and a costly manner. Um, hopefully not so costly manner, I should say. Uh, project control steps for measuring and evaluating project performance. That's setting a baseline plan. Measuring progress and performance, comparing plan against your actual, like, so here's my plan from, you know, beginning of the semester, here's how it's actually going, here's the things we've adjusted and how we're tracking how that's performing, and then, of course, how are you going to take action. So let's talk more about monitoring time performance. Uh, the typical to tools used when communicating your project schedule status is a Gantt uh, chart, which you know is a bar chart, that is usually the most favored, used, and understandable. It's commonly referred to as tracking Gantt chart, as a tracking Gantt chart. A uh, control chart is used to plot the difference between the schedule and the actual times of a critical path. Um, the big one for this uh, particular course um, has been the Gantt chart, um, and, and it will continue to be. Um, but there is such a thing as a control chart that I'll use. Uh, I'll be able to show you here in a second. Uh, milestone schedules are often used to keep um, the distal stakeholders informed in progress of a project. Milestones are significant project events that mark major accomplishments. So um, we can use the the common analogy that we've used of, of building a house or building a building. Um, you know, a construction crew comes in there. They they owe the homeowner or or, or the contract holder. Um, updates on, okay, hey, here's how we're tracking towards milestones. You're still going to be able to move into this house on this date um, or around this date. It's, it's hard to narrow down, especially with a dicey supply chain. But um, the owner, the contract holder, is going to expect... Um, is going to expect updates of how things are tracking. So this is, you know, something pretty common, um, even in a corporate world when we're talking about projects. Again, a project is very much like building a house. You, you have a project owner, you're doing something for somebody, they're going to want an, up, an update. And if you're falling behind, you better give them an idea because they may have hired movers to move in a month too early, if that makes sense. Um, again, here's here's a, uh, you know, the baseline Gantt chart. Um you guys are very familiar with, hey, here's here's what's going on, the stripe line, this is what you've made. As you actually execute the project, um, you've hopefully built in some slack. Uh, you see some slack here uh, that allows for adjustments like, hey, if this, you know, stage six to seven, which is a parallel activity, runs over, we have some breathing room here before we start stage eight. So, um, now, okay, here's today, we're at stage six, or month six, or day six, whatever, you know, the, they don't really give the quali uh, the quantity here, what the, you know, whether we're talking about months or weeks or whatever, but so let's just say stage six, here's where we are, here's what we had planned, striped, here's what had actually happened, the blue, so we're, we're tracking pretty well, uh, until we get about stage, towards the second half of stage four, uh, part C runs over a little, so then we have kind of some slightly unplanned overlap. There actually, no, we we planned overlap here a little bit, so there's a parallel activity, but we're running long in six or seven. Here's where we are today, and we know we're running long, so we have this anticipated remaining duration, which if you look at part D of the project, it's running a good bit longer than we had anticipated. But hey, we did build in some slack. It wasn't quite enough, so we're going to build in some more. We're going we're to have some slack here and have some unanticipated parallel activity here. Again, uh, this is our, our baseline where we were going to be, and we're going to take, let's say, a week longer or a month longer on this project. We're going to go from 12 months to 13 months. You can see in the Gantt chart when you're tracking, here's today. Here's what we have going on. It's running over by about this, which is going to cost us this in the end of the project. You're taking something that's potentially confusing to track, 
uh, maybe upsetting for whoever the contract holder is, let's say the person buying the house. But even though it could be bad news, you're giving them an exact breakdown of when to expect. So let's move the movers from December to January. Okay, now just as a rough example, let's move the movers from you know day 12 to day 13. Um, so Gantt chart really, I mean, graphs and charts, I'm an economist by trade, they, they're meant to simplify. And that's exactly, the, there's obviously a lot of explanation as to what's going on with this project as to why this got extended. But this gives a clear definition to the contract holder what is going on. Now, let's take a look at a control chart. Um, this is something we haven't spent a ton of time on in this course because I, I really lean towards the Gantt and the industry leans towards the Gantt. However, you have your time periods here. You have a baseline. This dotted line is a baseline. Here's where you are today. This blue line, anything below this line, you're running behind. Okay. Anything above this line, you're running ahead. So here in this one point, like stage four, you're right on time, which is great because you're running behind from, from the start through the first couple stages, a uh, few stages, you should say. Now you're running slightly ahead, which is awesome. So below the line, running behind, running ahead above the line, the line is the plan. So we're running slightly ahead of schedule after having struggled right out of the gate. So now that the contract holder knows exactly how the project is going. So a control chart. Uh, I'll let you read more about that. There's actually some examples they give here that I've left out for the brevity of this lecture. Now, let's talk a little bit about specific measurements. Earn value management, EVM, EVM, okay, is a methodology that combines scope, schedule, and resources, uh, resource management, or management, hello, resource measurement to assess project performance and progress. This was pioneered by the U.S. Department of Defense, the DOD, in the 1960s. Uses several acronyms, so if you get the government involved, you know we're going to have some acronyms, so get ready, and equations for analysis. It uses data developed from a work breakdown structure. Remember how we took our, our projects and narrowed them in scope and then broke down all the different parts and made a work breakdown structure, WBS, your project network, and that kind of hub and spoke that we talked about earlier in the course, and then, of course, your schedule, which helped you build your, build your Gantt charts. So this analysis, the EVM, starts with a time phase cost that are provided in the project budget baseline. So here's your plan. Here's my work breakdown schedule. Here's uh, our structure, rather. Here's my schedule. Here's you know the cost of each individual part. We're going to put that together and make a cash flow. So you have a budget, uh, which is called the plan budget value of the work, uh, the, the PV. Here we go. We've got a DOD, got an EVM, now PV, a work schedule. Okay, the planned value of the work schedule. The comparisons can be made between the actual, you know, what's going on, and then our planned scheduling costs. Whew, here we go. Glossary of terms. I told you we're going to have some acronyms once the government gets involved. We have earned value. We have planned value based on the plan. So you have earned value and planned value. Uh, actual cost, AC. We have cost variance. So the cost variance is the earned value minus the actual cost. So what we planned on having minus what we are actually having is what's the variance from that plan. So if you look at like in terms of time, distance from this line and dollars from this line, this is time. So days and hours from this line is a variance from where we should be. So this is a negative variance and this is a positive variance. The same thing can be said for your dollars, okay? Same thing can be said from your dollars, all right? Schedule variance is the difference between the earned value and the baseline date. Um, budgeted cost at completion, estimated cost at completion, estimated cost at completing remaining work, and variance of that completion. So basically, two, well, three things. You have your plan and where you're going to be in terms of times and dollars. And then you have actuality, where you're going to be in terms of times and dollars, and then the difference between the two. Okay, so three things there. Plan, actual, variance. Now, with all this in mind, we can develop an integrated cost and uh, schedule system. Now, it's a busy slide. Deep breaths. I'm not going to bring in all these equations on this thing on you just, <laughs> just yet. Um, it all goes back to defining the work and the work breakdown ske uh, schedule, or structure. I always want to say schedule, but it is a schedule. Your work breakdown structure. The scope of your project, the work package, the deliverables, the organizational units, the resources, the budgets from each work package. Okay, We have to develop a work and resource schedule. All right, So this is where the WBS structure leads into the schedule. The schedule is the resources of activities and how you're going to use them. Tom Fain's work into the network. You end up with a Gantt chart, right? 
and develop a time phase budget, you end up with the cash flow. And remember the WBS, we had we had lag time built in there, and we started to break down different costs based on the individual units, and then we added all those costs up, and you had a budget. Wonderful. So you're there. You're really doing a lot of this through step three. At the work package level, collect actual costs for the work, work performed, called the actual cost of the work completed, AC. Multiple percent complete with the original budget mine. So what's happening here? in this course. Obviously, it's it's difficult to execute the projects you guys are planning in a 16-week semester, but we've been planning. So essentially, you're going through step three here. Step four takes it another step. Okay, you're now actually implementing this project. Now, what are the actual differences versus the planned differences? So this, cor this, this uh, course stops right on the doorstep of actual implementation. So this is that next step in tracking. You compute your schedule variance, okay? What is the actual schedule difference between what you planned and what's actually going on? Are you ahead of schedule, bad, right on schedule, or behind schedule? What's your variance from that line? Then you look at your cost. What's your budget? What was your planned budget, and what is actually going on? Are you under budget, on budget, or above budget? If so, what's your plan? You have to be able to track these things. When we get to actual implementation of the project, you're going to have to track your measurables, and that's what this chapter is all about. Now, we have to develop a project baseline, PV, to measure and report progress against. So you have to have a baseline, that line, if you will, that, you know, that plan on your Gantt chart, what's the variance there, if any, to measure your, uh, and measure and report your progress. You have to do this to estimate your cash flow. So we've done a good job to date of making our cash flow, making our, our schedules, making our work breakdown structures. Then when you actually start taking steps towards it, what's the variance? Are you, are you on schedule? Are you off schedule? Are you, you, know, you know, ahead of schedule? And the same thing with the, with the budget. So there's some rules in assigning costs to the baseline. Costs are placed, time phase, and the baseline exactly as managers expect them to be earned. Percent complete is the workhorse most commonly used. Take back to that Gantt chart, uh, which you've actually achieved. Are you, you know, on, off, or above schedule, um, budget, you know, either one. Someone familiar with each task estimates what percentage of the task has been completed and how much the task remains. What are the costs that are included in these baselines? The baseline is the sum of cost accounts, and each cost account is the sum of work package in the cost account. Three different costs are typically included in the baseline. you got to account for your labor, any necessary equipment and overhead, and the materials used. I think we've done a good job to date uh, developing some initial cash flow statements that, that you, could, you could consider your baseline. But again, that started with narrowing your scope, breaking things down into smaller pieces, assigning costs to those smaller pieces, and then reassembling them into a total schedule, a Gantt chart, and then a total... Uh, budget for the project. Now, we have to compare earned value with the, what's the expected schedule value and the actual cost. I think we've, we've talked adequately about that. We have to assess the current status of the project and what it requires, and that requires three data elements. The planned cost of work, the budgeted cost of work, and then the actual cost of work. So, here's what we plan. Here's what our host company, our partner, our third party that we're consulting with, or our boss gave us this budget versus our plan. Okay, what's the difference there? And then what is the actual implementation costing? Then we have to compute schedule variance and cost variance. So again, time and money. A positive variance indicates a desirable condition. You're running ahead of schedule and under budget. Well, a negative variance suggests problems and changes that may need to take place. You're running behind budget, and are you running behind schedule and over budget? And then, of course, in between, you're running on schedule and on budget. Again, again, variances, cost variances tells us if the work accomplished costs more or less than the plan at uh, any point in the life of the project. Schedule variance presents an overall assessment of all work packages in the project schedule to date. Um, the schedule variance contains no critical path of information. Just hey, are we on task or not? And planned on our, you know, your schedule that you came up with. Okay. Now keep in mind schedules change. And you have to adjust them, but you have to be able to communicate that and track. 
So each one of you as project managers, if I'm your supervisor and I come to you and I say, hey, look at uh, what's going on here with the project. You can say, you can say, boom, here's where we are on budget. Here's where we are on time compared to where we had planned. We're either over, under, or on schedule. Okay? We're either over, on, under, or on budget. Any variance at completion, back here, suggests that the cost at completion of the project will differ from what is planned. Listen, the plan can always change. It will be rare that you come in right on schedule and right on budget. It would be great if you came on ahead of schedule and under budget. You better have a plan if you come in over schedule and over budget. You're going to have to explain that, okay? It's as simple as that. You have to explain the variances from your plan. All best laid plans, you know, things happen. It happens, but you have to be able to explain it really well. And using simple tools like a cost control cart, uh, chart rather, and a Gantt chart um, help you do that. So communication is key. You can't just go about it and say, hey, we're just going to spend more money without getting approval for it. Or, hey, um, we're going to come in under budget and not expect some kudos. So... Early on in the plan, that's why you build in the lag. That's why you build in the extra budget. Okay? It's smart to underpromise and overdeliver. I mean, that's, that's just practical application. It's smart to underpromise and overdeliver. Now, looking at cost graph, cost and schedule graph, um, we got the time on the horizontal axis, the cost on the vertical axis. Uh, we have the project baseline is this middle line. Okay? We have the actual cost. Looks like they're running a little bit higher than what we anticipated. And we have the earned value. So this is your cost. This is the value the project delivers. At the moment, costs are up. We are somewhat on schedule, um, but the costs are, are high. Although they do look to maybe trend down, and your projected value looks to trend up. So we don't know right now if this is going to exceed this, but the trend is here. Then it's your job to report this to whoever's overseeing your project and make sure that they understand this is the exact situation they are so they can make the, you know, the smartest, the best, and this is incomplete information, but the best decision as it regards to your project. Now let's look um, uh, at some different examples here. Project value over time. Okay. Earned values, actual cost is really low. Earned values high, earned values high. Um, or excuse me, earned values below actual cost. This is, this is kind of a nightmare right here. Look at these costs. They're really high. Um, this is trending pretty close, okay? And earned value uh, is trending up. This is kind of like that previous graph we looked at here. And then we have earned value here. It's really high. Your, your actual costs are currently under, but also trending up while this looks to be leveling off. But you're still ahead of your project value. So these are some possible reporting structures. Now, indices, indexes, I should say, to monitor progress. Performance indexes, cost performance index, uh, not to be confused with consumer price index, CPI, uh, is your earned value divided by your actual cost, measures the cost efficiency of work being accomplished to date, schedule performance, SPI, earned value over project value, measures the scheduling efficiency to date. Basically, it all comes down to variance. Um, you you want to you wanna be... At worst, on schedule and on budget. Uh, at best, uh, ahead of schedule and below budget. Uh, project, if you're not, you better know your variances there. Uh, project percent, because if you look at it, let me go back here. If you look at these are trends. Right now, the actual costs are trending ahead of project value, but not by that much. Right here, actual costs are way out of control compared to project value. Okay? And then we'd love to see this earned value be going up. Okay? We love this. Earned value is high. Um... Actual cost is 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 trending up, but this is good. Uh, project values here, earned value uh, account. You need to be able to report how you're performing. Project percent complete indexes, uh, percent complete index budget to cost, percent complete index uh, actual cost, management reserve index uh, is pretty popular in the construction uh, industry and reflects the amount of management reserves that has been absorbed by cost overrun. So how much is this cost overrun affecting the company's financial well-being? You you can't, this can't be just a, a, a stab in the dark. This, this is incomplete, right? You, you don't have all perfect information if you're, the, if you're the executive over this project and you're talking with your project manager. Number one, they need to be able to report this. Um, number two, 
Um, you have to make decisions based on incomplete information as the executive. So for the purposes of this class, again, I'm taking you to the doorstep of implementation so we don't have the actual cost. Um, the next step, the next step, maybe we should offer a, a project management graduate level class. The next step was, would be where you implement a project, um, say for the college, say for the, for the university. And we can tr actually track the actual cost and then you report back. That's the next step. That would be the next iteration of this course or stuff like this, okay? All right, um, under cost, great, greater than one. On cost, okay, right where you're on plan, good plan. Over cost, behind schedule, okay? Greater than one on these indices, awesome. Equal to one, right on plan. Less than one, we need to talk. How are we gonna get back on schedule? How are we gonna get back on budget? Um, additional earned value rules. Rules apply to a short duration activities and small cost activities. The zero or 100 rule assumes 100% of the budget is earned when the work package is completed. The 50-50 rule allows for 50% of the value of the work package budget to be earned when it started. 50% uh, of the earned um, when the package is completed. The rule use, uh, use gates before the total budget value of the activity can be claimed. The percent complete with weighted monitoring gates. Uses subjective estimate percentages to complete the combination with a uh, hard tangible monitoring point. This is all very thick jargon to basically say this is like cutting the grass for your parents. Okay. Here, let's say I'm going to pay you 20 bucks to cut my grass. I'm going to give you nothing up front and 100% after you've done the work. Okay. Here, I'm going to give you $10 up front and $10 afterwards. All right, that's as simple as it is. That's, that's budgeting for you to complete a project for me. Forecasting uh, final project costs. Two methods used to revise estimates of future project costs. Revised estimated cost at completion allows experts in the field to change the original baseline durations and costs because new information tells them the original estimates are not accurate. Again, you have to adjust your schedule and your budget as you go. Forecasted total cost at completion uh, uses actual cost to date plus the efficiency index we talked about previously uh, to be applied to the remaining project work. So if you think back to those four graphs, when we have that cost, we're way over budget and... Um, running way behind schedule, you have to stop at that moment and make a new budget and make a new schedule so that the people uh, uh, overseeing the project can make an informed decision as to whether or not the project needs to continue. Forecasting models, again, we're talking about the EAC RE here and the EACF, okay? Uh, I'm going to let you read more about this. We're not actually going to get this far into this. In my estimation, this is more of a graduate level work. Um, However, subsequent instructors in this course may have you do this if they have adequate time. Um, again, you'd be revising the estimated cost of completion once you have actual cost compared to your plan. Um, and then you would be looking at the forecasted total cost of completion. So again, if you're running way behind schedule, uh, way over budget, I need hard numbers to make a decision to see if this project needs to be you know, allowed to continue or deep sixed. Another forecasting index here is the TCPI, which is the To Complete Performance Index, it's used to supplement the EACF, and it measures the amount of value each dollar, each remaining dollar in the budget must earn to stay on budget. Because I'm saying, if you're off your budget, if you're running over budget, you're going to be tracked a lot more closely, okay? A ratio less than one indicates the ability to complete the project without using all the remaining, pro remaining budget. Um, but again, I think that's a little too advanced for this semester and where we are. Um, other control issues, technical performance measurement is important as measuring schedule and cost performance. So, hey, we brought in experts for this. How are they doing? Scope creep causes problems when there's minor refinements that eventually build to a major scope changes. So, again, when we started the course, I said take your project and narrow the scope significantly. What tends to happen over time is it tends to creep out. It tends to get big again. So you got to guard against that. Baseline changes should be allowed. You can add to your projects. You can add to your projects, but that becomes a different project, if that makes sense. Baseline changes should be allowed only if it is clear that the project will fail without change. Uh, the project will imp or the project will improve uh, significantly with a change or the customer wants it and will pay for it. Uh, if you're building a house and you discover halfway through, hey, it needs a new roof, you got to get the customer's approval there. But if they say, hey, it needs a new roof, we're talking about a different timeline, a different budget. Um, data acquisition is timely and costly. So sometimes tracking this is very costly, especially when you're dealing with a small team in terms of their time and their costs. 
Again, it's a 30,000 foot view over project control and measuring performance. Please do the reading. There are some fantastic examples. I think one of a digital camera and we continue our software examples. If you want to measure, you know, compare your measurements against an example in the book, I highly encourage it. Um, this is above and beyond stuff. So um, thank you for listening to chapter 13. I'll see you in the next chapter.